Okay, wonderful. Well, hi, Pat. Hey, Sophie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Hey, congratulations on, on a fantastic games. How do you feel? Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I feel great. I'm so happy to be finished. You know, like <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was like, this is like four more hours and then I'm free, you know, I'm free to, <laughs> to oh. it's, you know, it's so, it's been so much pressure since uh, a year now because uh, obviously I got injured and then, yeah. then like every, I had to put every intention and energy into that comeback, you know, to be standing here at the Olympics and, and it's, it's amazing. I did it, you know, but yeah. it's, when you get when you get close to the end, you know the last. Uh, if you're walking like 40 kilometers, the last, the last bit is the hardest because you know you're getting close to the end, and and I'm super happy I I I made it. You know. Yeah. How do you manage that stress? That last 40 meters. I mean, do you have any techniques or? Ah, uh, you you gotta stay calm, breathe, listen to music. For me, it's the best escape. You know, I I also do my my funny stupid videos you know that that's yeah. something that it's always you know i think life is a balance and and there is a lot of weight coming to the one side of the balance at this specific time but if you if you manage to to balance it then it's it works you know and and now uh, now it's done and and happy to be to be here alive and healthy yeah i wanted to ask you about the videos because I, I follow you and uh <laughs> you're so much fun i mean it seems like you're thank you you're, you're more a really, <laughs> really fun-loving guy. Do you think that helps to keep that sort of, I don't know, just, I don't know how do you describe it, just keep yourself a little bit, feet on the ground, you know? Just stay sure. I mean, I've, I've, I've learned this through injuries, you know? So one, po one really positive thing about injuries is that it makes you realize you're just uh, like anybody else. You're human, you're human, and you... You know, you have a body, you have feet, and and it just gets you put your feet back to the ground. You know, and and when I, so when I, when I, when especially when COVID happens, that's when I really because I was always trying to even in the music. You know, I was trying to make music like some artists. I was trying to look like somebody else. And when COVID happened, I just realized, you know, life just uh, holds on a string, and it's yeah. so. It's not, you know, one virus and everything stops at a moment. Like the Olympics, get almost canceled. All the shows canceled. Like everything falls apart, you know, for one virus. And then I was like, why am I trying to be so serious my entire life? You know, yeah. as I could just like have fun and and be myself and just do stupid stuff. So I just went to the to this supermarket and we did one video with my coach just doing stupid stuff. And it got viral. And we're like... And it was funny and I was like, I like doing this, you know, so we yeah. kept doing it. And, and that's how I found this uh, Pat, this funny Pat, you, you know, and now it's crazy because you should have, I mean, it, here in China, it's like the guys at the start, they're like, oh man, you're a favorite snowboarder. We love you. You're so funny. <laughs> you know, and it's uh. like, I just realized how, how powerful this, this whole thing is, you know, because I think uh, spreading good energy and and doing this kind of stuff is is big, you know. It's uh, I mean, it's it's uh, Dwayne Johnson big, you know. That's what yeah. I mean. It's like it's like it's not it's much bigger for me. I'd love you know I love medals. I love to compete. I love to to go do good result results. But uh, at the end of the day, what matters is what what message you bring out there you know and and if this whole thing allows me to bring the, the best version of myself then then it's amazing you know and i think i'll keep snowboarding because that keeps me also in another way it keeps me like you know uh, feet on the ground too because uh i have to train it keeps me healthy you know even though i slam and i almost break my back every now and then <laughs> but oh. You know, I, I it's like a, being a sportsman is amazing because you take care of your body and you you know you learn a lot about yourself and 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 it's just you know now it's it's like a balance of music, uh, uh, content, and and sports. Yeah, how do you manage? Because you you really really have two professional careers. You know, one with the snowboarding and the other with the music. 
how do, how do you manage? Do, do the two help each other or can it be complicated sometimes? I mean, now it's even three, you know, like social media takes yeah. me a huge amount of time. Like I, you know, now because I play music quite well and I don't need to rehearse that much or I maybe I write in more specific time. You know, at the beginning, I was just writing all the time. Now I just, you know, I kind of write. Writing is just experiencing stuff, you know. So doing my fun videos and all this stuff is part of my of my creative process for music. So, so you know, it's like, it's a lot of time. I'm just 100% working, you know, like when I, on the day off here, like people just chill in their room and I just go down to the village and, and do fun interviews with athletes. You know, it's, mm-hmm. I'm going to drop the videos soon. Like so funny, you know, like things that could really change the, I think the Olympic village uh, history, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. So, yeah. So that, it's just, you know, at the end of the day, it's just being happy, being positive and, and doing cool projects you know and i think what makes what makes humankind fulfilled is just to it's like for you as a journalist just doing a great interview then you're fulfilled and you're like oh i made a great job and that's what makes that's that's our life's purpose you know and and for me my life purpose is just doing everything that comes up to my mind and make it to bring it alive yeah well you're doing a great job (laughs) thank you thanks so much uh, I wanted to ask you about your new uh, partnership with Amiga because that's really, really cool. How did that? Beautiful, yes, right? uh, it's beautiful. How did that come about? So, I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a really big uh, watch lover, like uh, most Swiss guys, <laughs> and you know, I've I've always wanted to. My old, my ultimate dream was to have a, a watch sponsor. You know. Because uh, representing a, such a such a beautiful brand, especially Omega, is you know that's it's like one. Of, it's definitely the one that you want to. If there is one I could choose, was always Omega, you know, and uh, and and somehow they just decided to do a campaign for the Olympics, and and they asked me to be part of it, and I don't know exactly how, but I think through my uh, popularity, through my music and videos and all this stuff, it's just. Uh, it just kind of made sense to to do a partnership, you know, and also I think it fits it, it fits really well. I've I've seen some pictures of me during the games now, and I was wearing the watch over the jacket, which is which is amazing, you know. Like yeah. I, I could watch; it's crazy because I was always keeping uh, an eye on the watch every time. You know, training is super. Like you have five minutes left to to train, and it's actually quite amazing to have a watch on your over your jacket. I've never done it before, so so uh, it was kind of a great a great discovery too for me yeah well that's certainly a watch that can keep up with you with all your <laughs> your rough and tumble lifestyle uh, the same I've, had, I've had a really bad slam with the watch and it survived it's like brand new i came down and it was like full of snow and you know that moment where you're like yeah take off the snow is it broken or not and it's like brand even better than before now it's got mm-hmm. it's got like some some living you know <laughs> uh, maybe you can be like a real life tester for amiga <laughs> yeah right I, I should i should i, I wanted to be the next james bond i already asked but uh, i don't know if it's gonna happen oh. <laughs> who knows in 10 you know. years maybe. who knows so what's the next challenge for you when you get back to switzerland you got any more snowboarding or are you gonna go straight into music now so i have this amazing project i'm doing with the fis and right to play which is a association who helps kids around the world and and we've been for three years we go now to lebanon every february and and we want to bring kids on snow you know like some refugees kids that have no nationality and nothing so my mother is lebanese and there is like a lot of uh uh armness how do you say um um po- poverty there yeah and and i'm really touched by this because i you know i'm i'm a privileged kid and i mean i think most of us i mean even if you're reading this interview or seeing this you're privileged because you have you you're you know you're part of society uh and and those kids have nothing you know and uh and i think bringing some attention there is is quite cool and just bringing them you know we've we've been there for the first time to see if we wanted to do such a project it was it was a lot of uh, time investments for me for everyone to go there and do this but it's it's so touching when we went to that school uh, and you see this this teacher who was a guy who had nothing in his life you know and and through this 
association, they brought him, they teach him how to become a musician and he was playing flute and it was amazing to see. And then the kids get interested, you know, and they, they start loving something in their lives. And that's why we we're going back there and we want to give those kids, kids a, a taste about what it's like to, to go out there, you know, and do something bigger than just stay there. And, and, and it's really a beautiful project, you know? So mm -hmm. well, the idea is to bring them on snow and, and then follow them up for the next couple of years, you know, with, uh, with teaching and stuff that maybe some of them might become snowboard teachers or, or, you know, musicians or whatever, just whatever um, life we can save there. It's, uh, it's my goal for now, for the next couple of weeks. And then uh, obviously uh, come back and, and train a little bit more, mostly do some stupid videos and, and, uh, and make record my album because I'm really I have so many songs now and projects in mind like it's exploding in my head now so I want to get back and do this okay any uh, concerts planned for the summer in Switzerland where we yeah. can see you yeah yeah I have a, I have a lot of concerts um, I'm actually gonna you know also go on tour with a couple of friends who have um, you know like a Bass and Baker who was also actually um, uh, Omega Ambassador, he's playing a tour, so I'm going to join him, you know, do some fun stuff on stage with him and, you know, go around, play some music. Uh, I've got festivals already planned. I think a show on the 1st in, in uh, where is it exactly? I don't remember, somewhere in Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, play shows, do cool projects and, and you know, work on that, work on that album. Excellent. Oh, well, thank you so much, Pat, um, you know, thank for you so taking the time to, to chat. You must be exhausted and, and I really appreciate it. I um, am. I am. But, uh, you know, now it's over. So I'll take all the time I need to to do all this, you know, interview and stuff. I, yeah. I love to do it. So. All right. We'll have a safe journey back to Switzerland and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much.